Hello everyone, welcome to my stop on the Lawn Fawn Fans YouTube Summer Hop. I am so excited to be back and so honoured to be working with this amazing group of crafters once again to bring you something adorable using products by one of our favourite stamping brands, Lawn Fawn. This hop has once again been sponsored, this time by Not Too Shabby. We'll get into that a little bit later, but just know there is a $25 gift voucher up for grabs. So what am I making for you today? It's this, a friendship bauble. What's a friendship bauble? I kind of made it up, so <laughs> let's get on to how I made it. If you've been watching my work for a while, then you probably know that I'm a big fan of my Cricut Maker, so I whipped these up for the backs of these baubles. And I'm showing you this just so you know where these sentiments came from. They weren't stamped, they were written by my machine. So the main idea behind this thing is that it's a bauble that is two-sided and it can either be two separate pieces or be tied together to be one piece. Being a 90s kid and having long summer holidays, we'd often be away from our best friends for a long time and I thought about things like friendship bracelets and friendship necklaces and how you'd keep one half and your bestie would keep the other. And then when you bring them together it makes one piece or one image. That's why I'm making two separate tiny scenes that kind of make a little story. I grab these baubles from craft shops around Christmas time. They're usually fairly cheap and I love that I can make two different baubles or two different decorations every time I open one of them. Being a budget crafter I find that a really handy little hack. I love anything that I can get more than one use out of. Okay so let's get decorating. I have some distress ink here that I'm going to blend for my grass and I have my fresh lavender and mermaid inks. These are going to be for my daytime sky. I'm using three different stencils today. I just thought I'd show them. I'm using the new grass stencil, the cloud stencil, and the very new starry stencil. Here I am just blending some of that fresh lavender, and then I work my way up to the mermaid ink. My brush was a little bit loaded with dark blues, so I went back to that sponge tool. They're not my favorite, but it really did the trick for this one again. It's a little bit tricky coming up with like bright, sunny, warm ideas when on this side of the planet we're a little bit cold, damp, and sad. <laughs> but it was also really nice to think of warm and sunny days. Once I was done with my sky, I came back in with a little bit of that fresh lavender and the mermaid ink to make these little clouds. I wanted this sky to be mostly clear, but the clouds really give it a nice little detail. I used the same sky design for the back of this half of the bauble. So that white circle I've got next to me with the writing on it, I did the exact same design on that one. So that when this half of the bauble is by itself, it looks like a complete piece. I used my ink right over those words. They actually held up really well. I was worried that they would blur a little bit, but they did really good. And then use my cloud stencil again. I think it looks even cuter on the back. I then took my liquid stardust, this stuff is just so beautiful, watered it down a tiny bit and sprinkled it over both pieces. As you can probably guess, I repeated this process for the other backgrounds, for the other half of this bauble. Only I didn't keep things light, I did go over some of the glass and around the edges with my black ink brush, just with a bit of excess ink, just to give it more of a nighttime feel. Using these colours for all the background for the night sky was kind of inspired by a card I had recently made. It was a sympathy card and I really loved how the colours for the night sky came together on that one. I used some white ink this time for my clouds. I just wanted them to be like little whispers of clouds. I didn't want them to stand out too much. I wanted it to look like a night where you could see the stars through the clouds. Using some of my beautiful gold watercolor pigments, I picked the white gold to add some little flecks to these so that it looked like little stars. But I had a lot more detail planned for these as well. I thought I would just quickly show that with the writing on the backs of these, I just traced over them in a black pen so that they were nice and bold, and I filled in the gaps. And this is what they look like before I added some white details to the daytime writing and some silver details to the nighttime writing. For both of these, I used pens by Jelly Roll. These little extra details I do are obviously never necessary, but I do love the look that it gave them, especially the night sky one. 
Now here is where I tried to get a little bit fancy with this stencil. I was using some of my Nouveau drops and tried to spread it around with a spatula to get some cute little stars in the sky. I know this stuff isn't designed for it. It's clearly not, as I discovered, because it made a bit of a blotchy mess. Some of them look like stars, some of them did not, but I seem to be um, the queen of destroying backgrounds at the moment and I just find ways to work with it. And I'm actually kind of happy with how it turned out in the end. Now on to the stamps. I got my new release stamps from craftycafe.com.au. I hadn't purchased from them before, but I was really excited to get my order from them. They were amazing to deal with. I highly recommend them. These are stamp sets that I have previously bought from scrapdragon.com.au. They are also amazing to deal with. I just try to mix it up a bit between these Aussie shops so I can work out who's got what and maybe who ships the fastest, but really they've all been fantastic. As you can see, I've got a mix of both the spring release and the summer release here. I just can't get enough of these little mice. They're adorable. So while I'm stamping out these images and prepping to colour, I thought that I would bring up again that this pop is sponsored thanks to nottoshabbyshop.com. So that's an American website. I'll make sure there's more detail on that giveaway in the description to this video. I do know, however, that if you hop along to all these videos and leave a comment on all of them, that it gets you a lot more entries into the draw to win that $25 gift voucher. I'm not going to leave my Aussies out again though. I'm going to be putting everyone who is an Aussie who comments in the draw to win this set of baubles. The condition being that you tell me who you would give one of these baubles to. Would it be your bestie? Would it be someone in your family? Maybe someone you haven't been able to see for a long time. So no matter where you are in the world, make sure you comment below and let me know where you're watching from. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of music while I colour in. It was then time to start building my scene. I used this tiny little piece from the Sandy Accent die set to cut a little hole in this background as I wanted to pop some of my flowers and dandelions in there. My picnic mat then got chopped in half. I was able to use these two halves to complete the scenes in both baubles. Using some acetate, I cut some thin strips and without really measuring, I just put a couple of creases in it. This was so that I could fold it into like a kind of square shape and this is how I give a lot of dimension to some of the pieces in the baubles that I make. Because it's clear, you don't really see it and it can bring out certain images well off the background and allows for things like shaker elements to move freely around the images. I adhered that to my background, sliding it a little bit under the mat to make my scene a bit more seamless and so that I knew where my little mouse was going to stand. From this point I could then add the other elements to my background, starting with my cute picnic basket and all the little treats at this picnic. I used a mix of glue and tiny foam squares to give my pieces a range of dimension. I ensured to use my powder tool around those pieces that were raised so that none of my shaker elements would get stuck behind them. I repeated this for the other bauble too. I managed to get way ahead of myself and super excited with this piece that I had forgotten that I wanted to use certain images on the background. So using my powder tool and embossing powder, I stamped some tiny little dandelion pieces so that the mouse on the daytime side was blowing pieces of dandelion. I then also added this to the background with the sentiment to continue the theme. Just like I had done for my sympathy card, I softened my dandelions with a little bit of clear vellum. I started putting the scene together for my little mouse on the nighttime scene, giving him and his telescope all the dimension with that clear acetate. 
Aren't they sweet? I just love these little mice so much. They make such adorable little scenes. I then added a little bit of powder and some tiny little pieces of the dandelion fluff coming into the nighttime scene. Like no matter where this mouse is in the daytime blowing bits of dandelion, some of it manages to find its way to its little friend. I had to include the little ants somewhere. They really brought back like these memories from when I was a child reading the Mercer Mayer books. I'll include a picture here so that you can see which ones I'm talking about. Those little critters always had like an ant or a spider or a grasshopper with them. Maybe even a mouse like throughout the whole story. And I really felt like these little ants remind me of them. And because this was like a friendship thing and it reminded me of my childhood, I thought they just really fit the theme. So they both have a little ant in them. Maybe he's pinching food. <laughs> Maybe he's just there to remind them that they're not too far away from each other. Either way, I thought he was a really cute little addition. Now that both of my little scenes were complete, it was time to make these into baubles. I have so many offcuts from other projects and just happened to have some circles that fit these perfectly. They gave me just a tiny little extra lip around the edge and were perfect to stick these backgrounds onto just to give the whole piece a bit more thickness and a bit more stability. You may have noticed that the pieces with the sentiment on it had these little holes in it. I planned these so that when they went through my Cricut at the very beginning, these little holes would cut and these were big enough to fit my little ribbons in. With these little ribbons, you can tie them up just as a bit more decoration on the back of the bauble or to make the two pieces come together, they can be tied together. I hope that makes sense. I will show what I'm talking about. Using my tape runner, I popped a little bit of glue under the ribbon so that it would make it a bit more secure. And then it was time to glue all these layers together. They were now ready to have some shaker elements and for the domes to be placed on top. To do this, I simply used some children's PVA glue on the very edges of the bauble. This seems to be a good enough adhesive. I've never had any of them come unstuck. The hardest part is to make sure that none of the shaker elements touch it while it dries. For the night sky, I used some tiny iridescent stars and a few little purple gems. I then set it aside to dry. And for the daytime scene, I used these itty bitty tiny polystyrene balls. They are really, really cute, but were a bit difficult to work with. As you can see, I laughed and then I sent them flying everywhere. I think I did this twice before I managed to get the bauble on. I also used some tiny iridescent sequins. Very carefully placed so I didn't send those balls flying across the table again. Mm. To help these baubles set flush to the cardstock, I just used an ink pad and a tub of sequins and put them on top of the baubles just to give it enough pressure. Let's head outside and have a look at how it turned out. I'll leave you with some photos of the finished project. Make sure you check the description of this video to find the next stop on the hop. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait until the next halt. Bye for now.